When I read Larry Brown, it kind of made me discover more about myself as far as where I came from. Uh, even though he's from Mississippi, it sounded a lot like Southern Indiana because he would write about war vets, drinking, smoking a lot of cigarettes, uh, and fighting, you know, lost love, hunting, fishing, all those, those elements of uh, working class people. So where are you from? Given that this is Indiana, where do you live? And where, where's the world of your, of your literature? Uh, Harrison County, on through Orange County, and even some parts of Kentucky. And tell us the three most important things that we should know about that part of Indiana. <laughs> uh, booze, crystal meth, and guns. Yeah! <laughs> right. Booze, crystal meth, and guns. What's your relationship to the violence in this book? The people who are in it, I mean, those people, that's what they know. Right. You know, uh, it, it comes from working class and struggling class people. So the criminal element, that's pretty much what you know is violence. You know, when you don't get your way or you don't do what I tell you to do, then these are the consequences. You know, I don't tell you twice. <laughs> you like to dance, Frank? Because <laughs> I like to dance. <laughs> Tell us about the actual event, uh, the eponymous event uh, of this book. It's basically a three-day bare knuckle boxing tournament, and uh, starts off with about 20 people. Last person standing. Of course. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Of course, in the book, it doesn't get that far because a lot of chaos ensues. Things kind of go off the rails. Spoiler alert. But while this is going on, all these people are watching the fight, doing drugs, cooking, grilling having sex and what have you, all kinds of mischief. But like I said, a lot of other stuff goes on around that, so it kind of... Yeah, it's kind totally of taking place piece. during the downturn of the economy. People right. lost jobs and people were struggling, and this is kind of their outlet and where they can go and what they can do and kind of be with those working class people that enjoy getting fucked up and not having to worry about what they've lost and what they've suffered through. This is know. really interesting because that's what boxing and wrestling both used to be, right? Like, yeah, uh, oh yeah, exactly. Back, like, in LA, where I grew up, the boxing and the wrestling matches were a cheap ticket, right? It was five bucks for 10 fights, right? I would build the wrestling matches with my stepfather. Sure, yeah, my dad used to take me to the yeah. little, yeah. Well, my stepfather grew up in Indiana, and his, his father was a wrestling promoter. Uh, okay. And who, who, like my stepfather would tell me, it's like, see that little red bubble up above the turnbuckle? That'll be gone by the end of the night because there's blood in there. Right. right. And. Uh, but the thing is, like now boxing and wrestling both, you have to save for a long time to take your whole family to that. Which oh, is why yeah. things like big, you know, backyard right. fights and shit. Those guys are making millions of dollars a, a year. a lot of fucking you know. money. Whereas Gorgeous George wasn't making shit, right? Oh, no. like, I was like working. Steve Kerr and Stan Lane, the fabulous ones. Holy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. You know, the British Bulldogs. Yes, know, they yes, yes, all yes. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? This is the thing of it. Well, my dad used to take, what kind of fathers <laughs> raised you? My father took me to Saul Steinberg exhibit. 